What's the first time you actually sat down and played the piano? What age were you? You know, um, the timeline went so rapidly that I won't be lying if I said from the moment I first sat at the piano, I think roughly around the age of eight. From that moment to the moment when I was playing at the biggest stages of the world, we're talking six months which was kind of crazy <laughs> for the you know queen of england i played in front of the pope i played uh, for a crown prince of kuwait i guess the first time i thought and actually immediately decided that i'm going to be a musician is um, I was I wasn't even eight yet. I went to my mom and I said, "Mom, I'm going to be a a concert pianist." Literally, I just made a statement, I guess, and it didn't take my mom long enough to just you know they got me a piano, and uh, before I know it, before I knew it, my mother, um, bless her soul, she took me to Moscow and she had people from the one of the best schools in the entire world listened to me and before I knew it I was in that school I guess they saw something I guess they saw something right away and uh, as long as I remember myself it's just it was just always music I started seriously learning piano at the age of, at the, at the age of eight and I was still eight when I was playing at Moscow concert halls, the biggest, you know, biggest concert halls, it was the age of nine when I started really touring, and that was the age of ten when I played with the Russian Symphonic Orchestra, big symphonic, biggest uh, symphony orchestra in Russia, in the biggest concert hall in Russia. So it's out, we're talking about the shortest time timeline you can. And I was very uh, fortunate to get discovered and recognized by really the biggest. Um, music and talent foundations in Russia. At that time, there was a New Names Foundation, which was the major one. The I think it was the top uh, management, talent management at the time. Then uh, then went to Spivakov Foundation. Then there was a Russian Arts Foundation. And then there was a Aram Kachaturiana Foundation. It was, it was kind of a snowball of management foundations that took me under their wing one after another I guess it's kind of back then we did not have internet we did not have social media we had not none of that so it was all word of mouth it was all you know concerts after concert project after project people we would get discovered of course there was there were television there were television and I was on television quite constantly we would be having a big concert at Châtelet Theater in Paris, which is the the major concert venue in Paris. Of course, the, the national news would make a story on that. So, you know, little by little, uh, things got rolled out. And then I started participating in international competitions, the, the major ones. Competition, uh, to me, kind of kills the vibe and idea of being a musician. Yeah. I was really um, lucky and fortunate and to to win some major competitions. One of the biggest ones that actually changed my life further on in my life was the World Piano Competition in the United States, in Cincinnati. I got the first prize, although I was 13. Well, actually, I turned 14 at the competition. And the long story short, the age range was 18 to 32. So it was a misunderstanding again. Thanks to non-existing internet, I showed up in Cincinnati four years younger than I was supposed to be. It was a fantastic experience. I gained some relationships for for life, actually, out of that. And one of the prizes uh, for winning the competition was a performance at Carnegie Hall, which was amazing to be invited to perform at Carnegie Hall at 14 years old. That brought exposure, that brought experience more than anything else. At the age of... 17, I think that was the first time that I got the prize of the President of Russian Federation and um, that was great, that was great. We got to go to uh, Kremlin, we got to meet the President and there was a really small handful um, of musicians, young musicians who got that prize. That was 
quite amazing. The even more amazing, the following year I got that prize again. So I got recognized two years in a row for the same prize. That prize was actually, I'm kind of fast forwarding, was actually the reason I got the permanent residence here in the United States. You always build a case when you try to achieve the extraordinary artist of extraordinary ability green card and you build a case around certain awards and that was the award that they built my case around. Luckily I was granted uh, the permanent residency. I played for, oh my gosh, so many presidents around the world, um, kings and queens and I played for um, for the Pope, but that, that happened way before that. I was a little girl when I played for the Pope. I have been so fortunate. I can't count all the countries I've been in, been to, all the amazing venues I performed uh, with, all the amazing orchestras I collaborated with. At amazingly young age, now that I think about it, I have, you know, I have kids of my own, just imagining, you know, not not, I was not much older than my oldest kid that when all this was happening and it was just which is kind of fascinating to me right now. I played for President Putin, for President Yeltsin, I played for the you know Queen of England, I played in front of the Pope, I played uh, for a Crown Prince of Kuwait, played in front of Bill Clinton. Uh, that was in I think 2002. In early 2000s I went to New York to perform in public public library for the major event called Russia Engages the World. And it was amazing because I got to perform in front of the President Bill Clinton, uh, in front of so many incredible people from all around the world. That was that was fantastic. Yeah, it just took off really quickly. It I was this is a blessing and a curse I never had to, don't tell anybody. I don't never had to practice. I never had to really practice. There were many days when I practiced seven hours a day as a child, but it was not like sit and practice. It was like, you know, you practice, you play, you rehearse, you perform, and then you, you know, you have um, tutors and mentors who practice with you. So yeah, it was just like day filled with music, but it was never sit and practice for seven hours. I never had that in me, never wanted that, never was inspired for that, but I was lucky.